In this short ICT basics video, day trading basics video, I want to go over um, how much money do I need to put in my brokerage account to start? What sort of money do I need to start trading futures? The long story short, and uh, if you want to stop the video after 20 seconds, I understand, is about $2,000 minimum. Let me go into some of the math of that and, and explain uh, why I've come to that conclusion and uh, you know where that comes from. So there are really, you know, assuming assuming that you are trading micro futures, I'm going to show you some of the different micro futures contracts um, and the uh, point value. So why do I say that the sort of minimum that you should put into your brokerage account is no less than $2,000? Well, the micro ES is $5 a point. Um, on TradeStation, you need $1,232 to initiate a trade. I'm assuming here that you're taking on a 2% risk rule and rounding down. Okay, so 2% of whatever your account equity on any given trade is the maximum amount that you are willing to risk. And that should be, uh, I'm going to, my recommendation to you from a risk management perspective is no more than 2%. Um, that's sort of an industry standard number. You could go lower than that. Um, if you if you have a substantial account balance, $50,000 plus, $100,000, um, then I can understand if you want to go down to a 1% rule. Uh, but assuming that you're uh, like most people and you're of average means, uh, you're working a job and, and you need to know, okay, what is realistically sort of the number that I need to get to to put in my, to put in my brokerage account uh, so that I can trade with appropriate stop losses, um, trades that have stop losses that are not too far away from my initial in entry, but they're not too tight either. Uh, my recommendation is no less than $2,000. The micro ES is, so I want to bring up the calculator and tell you how I get to that number. Um, the micro ES is $5 a point. Now, assuming that you're on a discount brokerage like a TradeStation or an Amp Futures uh, Interactive Brokers or even uh, Charles Schwab TD Ameritrade, um, a 2% of account balance equity is, so we can put all the pieces together here, is... $40, okay, and it's $5 a point, okay? So taking a live example, let's say that we entered short here right at 40, uh, 48.70 evens, okay? And we had a 2% stop, so that put us up at 8 points higher, which is 47.80. Visually speaking, you can tell that that stop loss is wide enough that you're comfortable, um, but it's not too tight either. It's, it's a pretty good number. Eight points is, uh, it's okay, all right? It's a decent stop loss. You could even go wider with that. Um, but now let's say that you put on two micro ES contracts, let's say during a day trading session. So now you're at uh, 0 0.02, assuming you're always using just a flat 2% of account equity stop loss, which is my recommendation to you. So you had a $2,000 account balance, so you had a $40 stop loss. Now let's say you're risking $10 a point. Well, now you're down to four points. Okay, so if we put that at 47.40, 48, uh, sorry, 4874. Now you can see that your stop loss is right there. And that, guys, that's too tight. Okay, that's too tight. So every time that you add on a contract, um, it all starts from the 2% rule. So every time that you're adding on a contract, you're halving the amount uh, of points that your stop loss can be, assuming a 2% flat stop loss, which again is my recommendation. So realistically, if you're trying to risk 2% of a $2,000 account balance on the micro ES, uh, and you're on two contracts, or you only have $1,000 in your account, uh, then that four points is really not a lot, guys. Four point stop loss is, uh, especially when you have economic releases or you're in the regular trading hour session, 
We have a lot of volatility nowadays, guys, and four points, you're going to be stopped out a lot on four points. That's too tight, in my opinion. All right, let's go to the micro NASDAQ and show you, uh, show you that. So the micro NASDAQ is $2 a point, okay? $2 a point. So again, let's assume that same, uh, same $2,000 starting equity. So we have a $40 stop loss. All right, divided by two, that's 20 points. Okay, so let's see, 20 points would be uh, eight three quarters. Guys, I think you can visually see that from here to here is not a lot of money, and that's really that's only on one contract. Okay, so if you only have a two thousand dollar account equity, should you be trading the micro Nasdaq? Uh, with this current, the way that the market is right now, uh, I mean, you can just see this looking visually and how much the NASDAQ moves on a daily basis. Um, if you're using a responsible 2%, uh, is, it, is it worth trading the NASDAQ? Probably not, guys. This is probably too tight, uh, to be honest with you, if you're being responsible with your finances. And if you're not responsible with your finances, you're just going to lose all of the money in your account. I can assure you that. So... Here you can see the example on the micro NASDAQ. Now let's talk about the Russell, which is uh, $5 a point. Let's see, micro Russell, micro Russell point value. So the micro Russell is $5 a point. Okay, so $5 a point. So again, we're assuming that $40 stop loss. So we're at eight micro Russell points, which would put us up at this horizontal line right here. So if you're on a $2,000 uh, account, which is what I'm recommending as sort of your minimum, you can see that is the NASDAQ really a good option? No. Um, is the ES a good option? That's what I trade. You're pretty comfortable with that. You're at eight points of stop loss. The micro Russell, you're even you're even being more conservative at five dollars a point or fifty cents a tick. And at this point, you probably could afford. Let's see, uh, four points would be ninety uh, fifty nine spot seven. You could trade two micro Russell contracts. Um, and probably be comfortable with that amount of stop. Okay, so Micro Russell is a, is a decent option for you. And then let's talk about the Micro Dow. All right, so let's say for some reason you were to do, um, it's 50 cents a tick and there it's 50 cents a tick and the minimum fluctuation is uh, one one point so it's 50 cents it's 50 cents a point so again if we take uh we take our 2000 our 40 dollars stop loss that's 80 points and that puts us at and i want you to see these things visually that puts you at a fairly decent size stop so you could also realistically on a two thousand dollar account using a two percent uh 2% initial stop loss, you can see that you'd have some comfortable room on the uh, micro Dow. So I've been through all of our products here and that you can see that on a $2,000 account using a 2% initial stop, um, you don't have a lot of room initially to take losses. But again, assuming that you're willing to keep refreshing your account to at least $2,000, um, with your micro futures products here, you're comfortable pretty much with MES, M2K, and MYM. I wouldn't be comfortable trading the micro NASDAQ with this sort of volatility. 
Um, but realistically, guys, you can see how you do need a lot of capital to trade futures. And if you're trading them responsibly, you need to be cognizant of that. Um, and you have to be using some sort of risk management, 1% stop loss, 2% stop loss. I would not go higher than 3%. I will tell you that. Um, so with that being said, guys, the question is, how much money do I need to start trading futures? In a traditional brokerage account, assuming that you are trading one of these micro products, and there's also micro crude oil, micro gold, um, but I'm just looking at our indices here, my recommendation to use no less than $2,000. All right, if you're trading a funded account challenge, my recommendation is always to purchase the largest funded account challenge so that you can use 2% of your daily risk or 2% of your overall risk or however you want to do the math there. It should be 2% of something. Um, I don't recommend when you trade Top Step, Apex, uh, I think I've got another prop firm linked to my account. I do not recommend picking the smallest account size. Uh, if you're going to go into day trading, if, you're, if you are really, you know, you want to take it seriously, guys, you, you don't want to have a, a sort of death by a thousand cuts sort of scenario. Um, you need to be sufficiently capitalized so that you can use responsible uh, money management. All right, so I would say no less than $2,000 for a live brokerage account. Um, and then for one of the prop firm challenges, my recommendation is always pick the largest account size, not because we're trying to make the most amount of money. You need to stop thinking that way. Um, you're picking the largest funded account challenge size so that you can use reasonable and responsible risk management on every trade. And when you're trading the smallest accounts, I understand they're a lot cheaper, but you're just going to end up blowing through more of them and the cost will end up being the same. So you might as well, if you're going to take it seriously and you really are going to be using uh, a 2% stop loss on every trade, then uh, on your funded account challenges, my recommendation is to pick the largest account size. Okay, guys, um, this has been my video on what amount of money do I need to get into trading futures? Uh, so as you can see, I've been through our micro indices here and I've shown you on a 2% stop loss or $40 stop on a $2,000 account, some of the different sort of visually what you can see here, what your stops would look like. And you can see that a $2,000 account is viable for the micro ES, micro Russell, micro Dow, probably not viable for the micro NASDAQ. Okay, guys, uh, I hope that that helps you. And this information is current as of January 19th, 2024. You can use my referral links in the description box below. Bye.